So, welcome to this uh, course on uh, integrated circuits and applications. So, in this lecture uh, first I uh, will give the brief introduction to uh, integrated circuits, different types, the uses of uh, this integrated circuits and then uh, we will uh, consider one of the popular integrated circuits such as uh, operational amplifier. So, what is this integrated circuit? In short form this integrated circuit is called as IC. So, if you see the relation of uh, the circuits, you can realize any circuit using discrete components you can connect the discrete components on the breadboard and uh, you can give the input and power supply, you can check the outputs. So, the other way to implement this uh, circuit is integrated circuit in which we are going to uh, fabricate all the components, all the components on a single uh, chip of a silicon or any other semiconductor device. Okay. So, there are several advantages of this type of uh, relation. Okay. So, if you consider say for example, uh, a C amplifier which we might have studied in your earlier years, common emitter amplifier. So, how do you implement this? You can use the discrete component. Based relation. Or you can also use integrated circuit based relation. If you take a typical circuitry this will be something like this is the transistor. These are the bias resistances. This is the input, and this is where we are going to take the output. This is output, this is input, and this point is grounded, this is ground terminal, and this is VCC terminal, this is collector resistance, emitter resistance. This is in fact a capacitance which is called as bypass capacitance. This is R1, R2. This is a basic circuit diagram of a common emitter amplifier. So, here how many components are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 resistors and 3 capacitors. So, you can implement this using uh, 5 resistors and uh, 3 capacitors you can connect on a breadboard and you can give the VCC power supply of around 5 volts and this point you can ground. So, on the other hand in IC based relation, so all these components will be fabricated on a single chip. IC means so all the components, this components uh, includes active as well as uh, passive. So, in this circuit uh, what are the active components is transistor and passive components are R and C are fabricated on a single chip. of silicon or any other semiconductor devices, any other semiconductor material. So, here we will have a IC form, this is an integrated circuit. So, typically here what are the accessing points the input, output, VCC and ground 
4 pins are enough even if you require some other pins for the sake of uh, simplicity I am showing that this is a 4 pin IC. This is a 4 pin IC I will call this as C amplifier. So, what are the 4 pins? One is input pin, another is VCC, output pin, ground. This is not exactly any IC, but just I am giving as an example. So, these are the two relations. One is discrete component based relation, another is IC based relation. I have defined the IC, what is meant by IC? IC nothing but a circuit in which all the components active as well as passive components are fabricated on a single chip of either silicon or any other semiconductor material. So, what are the advantages of these ICs? There are plenty of applications. So, one of the application is uh, this is having large packing density. In the sense, so many of such components can be fabricated in a given small area. If I take this area of the typical area of a small scale integration circuits that we are going to discuss later is of the order of 1 mm square. Within 1 mm square, we can fabricate nearly 10 components. Here we have totally uh, 7 components, these 7 components you can fabricate on area of 1 mm square. Whereas, if you want to uh, fabricate this, if you want to uh, realize this using a uh, discrete component, it takes lot of area. So, this is one of the advantages, large packing density in this sense, more number of components can be fabricated in a, a small given area of, of the order of mm square. And the second advantage of this one is, because we are going to uh, eliminate the soldering uh, connections. So, this type of IC based relation is more reliable, more reliable in the sense the less number of errors. So, in case of discrete components we are going to use uh, soldering connections. So, because of that uh, it may sometime uh, results some errors, okay? whereas that type of errors is uh, not possible in case of ICs because of elimination of soldering connections. This is the second advantage. And the third advantage is high speed because of absence of the parasitic capacitance. This high speed is due to absence of parasitic capacitance. Parasitic capacitance is basically a wherever you have two wires, a capacitor is nothing but two uh, conductors separated by some dielectric. Okay? So, wherever some two wires are there, for example, this wire and this wire, there will be some capacitance. So, like that there will be some capacitances because of these wires, that type of capacitance are called uh, parasitic capacitance which is going to limit the speed of the circuit. Okay? So, in case of IC, because we are going to fabricate all the components on a single wafer. So, this type of parasitic capacitance uh, effect will be less because of this speed will be more because the capacitance is going to limit the speed of the circuit. Okay. This is the third advantage. Fourth advantage is we can have low cost. If you take the cost of this relation, this relation, this is low cost because we can have the mass production. Once if we fabricate this IC, we can produce in a mass. So, low cost due to mass production. And fifth advantage is this requires low power. IC based relation requires low power. So, because of these advantages, Nowadays, uh, most of the circuits will be having IC based relations instead of having discrete component based relation. So, most of the relations will be using ICs only. Okay. So, this is about the difference between the discrete component based relation and IC based relation and the uses of uh, IC based relation.
So, next I will discuss about the classifications of ICs. ICs will be classified based on the way in which the components are fabricated on the substrate. So, broadly these ICs can be classified into two categories. So, one is called as monolithic IC. The meaning of monolithic is single stone and the other one is hybrid IC. So, the basic difference is in case of monolithic IC as I have defined the IC in the last slide. So, here all the components which includes the active as well as passive are fabricated on single chip of silicon or any other material. Whereas, here we will divide the components as active and passive first the passive components. such as resistance, capacitance and all are formed on silicon substrate, silicon in or any other semiconductor material. So, this is only passive components, this substrate now will act as a chassis. Then the active components such as transistors, diodes, and even this monolithic IC also we can fabricate here. Monolithic IC. are attached to substrate. Now, what are the relative uh, merits and demerits of uh, monolithic IC and uh, hybrid IC? So, monolithic IC because all the components are fabricated on a single uh, chip. So, this is uh, low cost or the cost per unit is less. In case of mass production, whereas this is advantages in low volume production. So, this is advantage in mass production, this is advantage in low volume production. And the second advantage of this monolithic IC is high speed when compared with hybrid, because in hybrid some of the components are inside, some are outside, because of that the speed is less. But the advantage of this hybrid type of IC is, is more flexible, because there are some components outside, you can change the design of the circuit easily in that way it is called as mole flexible. So, this is the one uh, classification of uh, IC and uh, the second classification is based on the number of components we are going to fabricate on a IC. We have three type of uh, four types of technologies one is called small scale integration.
called SSI. If the number of components in the IC is less than 10, this technology is called SSI technology. And the second one is called medium scale integration, it is called MSI. If the number of components are less than 100, then this type of uh, technology called medium scale integration. And the third one is a large scale integration LSI. Here the number of components are between uh, 100 to 1000. And there is one more called very large scale integration, very large scale integration. Nowadays most of the circuits are VLSI circuits in this more than 1000 components. So, another classification is uh, based on the type of operation it performs digital ICs and uh, linear ICs. As the name implies digital IC, so this performs the various uh, digital operations such as implementation of the gates, comparators, multiplexer, demultiplexer, counters and all. So, here one of the advantage of this digital type of IC is the design of digital IC is easier because this digital IC it requires only the input output and power supply, this requires only input output and power supply. It does not require any external control. Unlike this digital IC in case of linear ICs which basically implements the amplifiers, filters. etcetera. Here this requires external resistor in some cases to control the uh, voltage gain and frequency response. Whereas in digital there is no need of any external resistance because it operates on only two voltages low and high. Ideally if I take low this is 0 volts, ideally this is 5 volts, but normally the range of voltage will be taken as low and the range of voltage will be taken as high. Whereas here because this uh, voltage varies from plus Vcc to minus Vcc, normally this range of this uh, supply voltages will be of the order of plus or minus 5 volts to plus or minus 25 volts. So, this requires external resistors to control sometimes the voltage gain and frequency response. So, mostly these linear ICs are analog in nature, this is also called as analog ICs. So, in this course we will discuss mostly the linear ICs and at the end we will discuss some of the digital ICs also. And there are some ICs uh, which uses both uh, analog circuitry as well as digital circuitry that is called mixed ICs such as A to D D to A converters that also we will discuss at the end of this uh, course. So, initially I will start with one of the popular uh, analog IC or linear IC is called operational amplifier. This is one of the very popular linear IC. So, nowadays you can find rare uh, circuits where uh, the operational amplifier is not employed. Okay. So, what is operational amplifier? So, basically operational amplifier is a differential amplifier. So, with uh, some of the uh, important characteristics such as high gain, high input impedance low output resistance and then high bandwidth. On the other hand, 
This is not only amplifier, this also performs some mathematical operations such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, exponential function, logarithmic function that is why the name operational amplifier. This is amplifier in addition to this amplification, this also performs some mathematical operations such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, logarithmic operation which we are going to discuss in the coming uh, lectures. So, if we take the block diagram of this uh, operational amplifier basically this is a differential amplifier which you might have studied in your uh, analog circuit course. So, basically there are four stages of this operational amplifier. The first stage is called input stage, this is basically dual input balanced output. differential amplifier. As the name implies it uh, amplifies the difference of the signal instead of single signal. So, there will be two inputs, one is V1, V2, this is non inverting terminal, this is inverting terminal. So, difference signal V D is V1 minus V2, this will be amplified with some gain. Second stage is another differential amplifier stage, this is called as intermediate stage. This is also simulative of uh, this uh, differential amplifier, the difference is only here, this is also dual input but it is called as unbalanced output. Differential amplifier. I will discuss the uh, use of each stage. So, this will be having single output, this is unbalanced in the sense we have only single output, this is balanced output means two outputs, this is having single input then there will be a, a level shifter. Stage. This is basically an emitter follower which you might have studied in your uh, analog circuit course. Follower with constant current source. And finally, there is an output stage. Then finally, you will get output V naught, which is some gain times input V d, V d is the different signal, different signal will be amplified with some gain. So, this output stage is basically a, a push pull type. amplifier. Now, what are the uh, uses of uh, each and uh, every block? So, first if I take the uh, input stage, dual input balanced output differential amplifier, most of the uh, voltage gain will be provided by this stage. And the second uh, use of this block is it establish the input resistance. Here if you take this, this is input resistance. So, this input resistance will be established by this stage. Whereas the second uh, stage which is uh, intermediate stage, this is also again a differential amplifier it also provides some voltage gain. This 
but because this is a, a direct coupled uh, stage, so this produces the output whose the DC line will be shifted. above ground level that is if this is the ground level 0 volts level so the output voltage will be something like this this is DC voltage above ground level so now to bring this DC level to the ground we are going to use a level shifter so, level shifter is going to bring the DC level to ground. And the last stage provides high voltage swing. In the sense, in the sense the range of the output voltages. If I want the output voltage in the range of plus or minus 12 volts, plus or minus 10 volts, this total swing is called minus 12 volts to plus 12 volts is called voltage swing. So, this stage is responsible for uh, producing the high voltage uh, swing. And another advantage of this block is, so this establishes high current carrying capacity. is provided by this stage. So, that this is having high current. So, if I connect this to the, the other circuitry, it can drive many of these devices, if I connect to the number of devices. So, in fact, ideally it can uh, drive the infinite number of devices practically. So, many of such devices can be drive by this current, because this current is large, this current provided by this is large. So, this is enough to drive this many such output devices that is the advantage. In the other use of this uh, last stage is, uh, which is called as output stages, if we properly design this provides the low output resistance. So, these are the different blocks of the operational amplifier. So, the uh, details of these uh, blocks you might have studied in your analog uh, circuits course. Now, here we will not go into the details of this uh, circuitry. So, we will use this operational amplifier using a symbol this. This is the symbol used for operational amplifier. So, there will be two inputs, one is non-inverting input, another is inverting input. You can name in any way V2 minus V1 or V1 minus V2, we call this one as V1, V2, then V1, V2 minus V1 will be amplified. This is output V0, this is equal to AOL times VD, where VD is this. If you take the equivalent circuit of the operational amplifier, this is called operational amplifier equivalent circuit. In short form, this is called as op amp. CKT is short form of circuit. So, there will be some input resistance which is denoted by Ri, there will be some voltage output voltage and then output resistance R naught, this output voltage is A O L times, O L is open loop V D, this will be grounded. In addition to this, this requires two power supplies, one is called plus V C C and minus V C C. 
this VCC ranges from less or minus 5 volts to less or minus 25 volts. This is the basic operational amplifier equivalent circuit. There are some important uh, characteristics of this uh, operational amplifier. which are called as voltage gain, if I take the ideal operational amplifier, you have practical operational amplifier. In ideal the voltage gain is infinity, voltage gain of the amplifier should be infinite, so that it can amplify even a weak signal also in many applications the signal to be amplified is very weak of the order of millivolts or microvolts. So, if uh, the voltage gain is large it is advantageous to uh, amplify even the weak signals also. Practically this is high of the order of if I take a practical 741 IC this is one of the popular uh, operational amplifier is 741 this voltage gain is the order of 2 into 10 to the power of 5 very high. And the second parameter is called input resistance, Ri. This is ideally this should be infinity, but practically this is for this particular IC 741 is of the order of 100 kilo ohms. So, I will discuss uh, why this input resistance should be large, large value of input resistance is advantageous, okay, amplifier with larger input resistance is preferable when compared with the uh, amplifier with uh, less input impedance and a small value of output resistance is preferable. RO ideally is 0, practically for 741 this is 100 ohms and another is the bandwidth. We can use this operation amplifier to amplify both the DC signals as well as AC signals. Okay. If AC signal is applied here, what is the frequency range of the signal that can be amplified? faithfully means without any distortion. So, the bandwidth of ideal uh, operational amplifier is infinite means 0 to infinite frequency all the frequencies it will amplify, but practically for, for a 741 bandwidth will be of the order of 0 that is DC to 1 megahertz. And there is another parameter called a common mode rejection ratio, I will define later this parameter. So, this should be infinite. Whereas, for practical 744 IC minimum value of CMRR is 70 dB, this is measured in dBs, this is a minimum value. And another is called slew rate, this also I will define later in the coming lectures, this should be infinite in case of ideal, whereas for 741 practical operational amplifier this slew rate is of the order of 0.5 volts per microsecond, this is measured in volts per microsecond, later I am going to define this. So, before going for this the uh, ideal and practical circuits, I will first explain why the input resistance should be very large for a good amplifier, output resistance should be less. For example, uh, I will take a amplifier, and after amplification this will produce some output signal. Suppose if I feed the input signal to this amplifier, the amplifier will have some input resistance, let this is the input resistance of the amplifier R i. So, how to feed this signal 
they require a signal source. So, signal source this will produce some voltage this can be either AC or DC and uh, there will be some source resistance normally very very less source resistance RAC is of the order of ohms in many cases this will be neglected say this is V s is the source voltage and the actual voltage that is applied for the amplifier is this V i. So, ideally speaking what V i should be V s, V i should be V s means this is ideal case. So, whatever the the voltage that is produced by the source we are going to input feed to the amplifier, but practically what happens is what will be the relation between the V i and V s this will act as a voltage divider. So, there is a voltage source V s there is R s resistance and R i resistance the voltage across R i is equal to which we are calling as V i is equal to V s into R i by R i plus R s. So, normally as I have told R s will be of the order of ohms say some 10 ohms it is very very less in many of the applications uh, the source resistance will be neglected. If I take R i also less so this is also 10 ohms. So, what is V i and let V s is equal to 5 volts. What is V i is equal to V s into R i by R i plus R s. So, this will be 5 volts into 10 by 20 this is equal to 2.5 volts that is half of the voltage will be dropped across this resistance only half of the voltage will be transferred ok. This is undesirable ok. In practical ideal case the input that we are going to feed through the amplifier should be equal to the, the input uh, produced by the source. So, that is why less input resistance will cause effect called loading effect this is what is called loading effect. So, in order to avoid this loading effect R i should be large on the other hand if R i is large say of the order of say R i is some 10 kilo ohms then what is V i V s into R i by R i plus R s this is 5 volts into this is R i is 10,000 divided by 10,000 plus 10, 10,010. This is almost this uh, division is almost unity. So, 5 volts will be approximately 5 volts will be transferred to the amplifier. This is the desired uh, situation, okay. this type of situation is desired where the uh, entire the voltage that will be generated by source has to be delivered to the amplifier ok. So, that is why R i should be large. To avoid the loading effect. So, in any case a large value of R i means it is a good circuit. So, then uh, output resistance why output resistance should be low now amplifier is the source so this will produce some output voltage this will hang some output resistance some voltage or output resistance output resistance will be in series. So, this produce some voltage V o is the output voltage produced by the amplifier say this is R o is the output resistance. So, where we are going to feed this output resistance to some load with some load resistance R l.
So, the voltage that is generated by this operational amplifier or any amplifier we are going to supply to the load through some output resistance or not. Then actually the voltage across this load let us call as V L. In ideal case, so the maximum voltage will be transferred. Okay. In ideal case the entire V naught has to be transferred to the V L. If V L is equal to V naught means ideal case. But practically this depends upon the R naught and R L. Okay. So, what is the uh, expression for V L voltage division again V naught into R L by R L plus R naught. If R naught is large, say this is 10 kilo ohms. If R L is also 10 kilo ohms, then V L will be equal to 5 volts into 10 by 20, second 2.5 volts. This is not desirable. Okay. So, in order to transfer the maximum output voltage to the load, so we will consider R naught is very small, say R naught is 10 ohms. Then what will be output voltage V naught? V L is equal to V naught 5 volts into R L is 10 kilo ohms, 10,000 divided by 10,010. This you can neglect, this is approximately equal to unity. So, this is approximately equal to 5 volts. This is the maximum output voltage transferred to the load. Okay. That is why a low output resistance is desirable. Okay. So, for an ideal amplifier, the input resistance should be very large and output resistance should be very low. Okay. So, like an ideal operation amplifier, input resistance is infinite, output resistance is 0. Okay. So, these are some basics of the operation amplifier. The actual operation amplifier circuits such as the uh, inverting amplifier, non-inverting amplifier we will discuss in the next lecture. Thank you.